Today we're going to take a look at how I use NeoVim Movie Flutter. If you haven't set up NeoVim before, you can take a look at the Primogen's video. I will link it down in the description. So let's take a look at a quick example of how I use NeoVim. So here's a new Flutter project. I misspelled Flutter, ignore that. To open NeoVim, I write NeoVim dot to open the file explorer. I can do command P to search files. In this case, let's go to main.dart. In here, we can see that the analyzer is running and I can see that everything is working fine. I can go and check the documentation. This is kind of similar to any other kind of editor. You can see the documentation in this case of material app. I can close that down. I can go to the definition as well of material app by pressing GD. And of course here I can check the documentation of anything else here. If I navigate back, we're still back here. I can of course get the completion window up as well. For example, on theme data, we can get all of the settings here as well. I can add a card color to something like red. In this case, I have Copilot up as well. That's why you could see kind of like the auto filling. But of course I can just tab that out if I want to use the Copilot experience. We can remove that line. If I would have a error in the code, let's say I misspelled blue, you can see that I have an underscore. If I try to save, everything is fine. We still have the underscore. If I press space DL, I will list all of the diagnostic issues in a list, so diagnostic list. Um, and here we can see all of the issues I have. If I press on one of them, we get to that part. I can also add another issue here. If I open diagnostic window again, we can see that we have it there as well. And I can use shift D and shift U to navigate between my diagnostic issues. And I can kind of solve them one by one. So blue, we can navigate to the next one. And this is page. And then if I would save that and check the diagnostics, we don't have anything to list anymore. Now to get started actually looking at how it looks to actually run Flutter. What I have here is just another terminal session. So one thing you have to be aware of is I'm using Tmux to kind of switch between sessions and have them be able to run in the background. So in this case, I'm switching to a new session. In here, I can run a specific command. In this case, Flutter Watch. Here I can add my command line argument, like my arguments as well to the command. In this case, we don't have anything. We just want to run the normal Flutter run command, but we also want to watch for changes. How it does that is by using something called Nodemon, which is just an npm package, where it just listen to file changes. Here we can select something to run. In this case, I will just open macOS. So here you can see pretty much just the application running. We have the blue one, which is just the file watcher. You can ignore that if you want to. I just typically have it to very minimal space. Here you can see the typical flutter run command in the terminal. We can go to the debugger if we want to. And we also have all of the Flutter commands. So if you press C for clear, H, we actually have a bunch of commands in the terminal. We can dump the rendering tree. We can toggle widget expector. So for example, if I press I, everything we have now is kind of like the widget expector. We can check the widgets and everything like that. I can cancel that by pressing I again. But that's kind of just how you would use the terminal uh, approach compared to the ID in this case. If we navigate back now to the actual code, we actually have everything we want to. So for example, for hot reload to work, in this case, we have the primary swatch to be colors blue. Let's change that to red. And as soon as I save it, we can see that the color as well in the application is changing. Everything is working as expected. We can remove the title. And if we remove the title, the title is gone. So kind of like everything we expect is kind of there. Uh, we don't lose anything out. The main difference here is that we're using the terminal to run in the application. There is actually a plugin called Flutter Tools where you can get all of the things you want to as well inside the NeoVim editor. I personally prefer the terminal. That's just what I've gotten used to in general. So let's take a look at some of the other things we kind of expect in an editor. For example, we have in this case the floating action button. I can do space CA to kind of get up the code actions, hence CA for code actions. Here we have all of the things we in general typically do. And in general, this list is kind of large. So what I've done is that I'm using telescope to actually prompt it into this kind of window here, which is a lot easier to then be able to search for whatever I want to do. In this case, as you can see, we don't have to write the exact same thing. We can use typically like 
fuzzy search, whatever we want to do. Let's add a example of something we might want to do. So let's take a look at just an example kind of coding session. Let's say we want to have the um, number in the middle of the screen. We don't want to have any text. In this case, we have the typical code action. We can remove the center if we want to. If we save that, we don't have the constraints of the center widget, so we will have it to be left side. We can remove the alignment. We don't want to have the text in this case for pushing the button. And in this case, we have the column. We can remove the widget of the column. And now we have used the text in the top right corner. In this case, we remove the center. So let's, let's add it back. So we can do wrap with a center. I can save it. I have it in the middle. Let's also just make the number larger. Let's take headline one. And now it's larger and everything is working as kind of like what you kind of expect. That's kind of a quick overview of how I use Flutter. Let's take a look at the actual configuration of getting this set up. So I will navigate to my dot files. We will open that directory. So this is actually all my dot files. You're completely free to just check out whatever you want to. I have that linked in the description as well. Let's start with the Flutter watch command. Um, this is kind of straightforward. What we're doing is we're using tmax to kind of open a new session or a split in this case with the flutter run command as well as the node one uh, node one watching. And that's all there is. You can, if you want to, you can pretty much just copy paste this and add it to um, your preferred shell configuration. And you can just run that as a flutter watch command in this case. If I have any specific configuration I usually run, I use reverse search the terminal for that specific command. But you can also, of course, add keybinds to those if you want to. Something else that I didn't show you is we have all of the things we kind of expect. We have the file tree. We also have things like Git management. So for example, because this is a completely new project, we haven't committed anything, everything is just stage. But I use Fugitive as a plugin to kind of manage Git conflicts. Another thing I usually do is that I use something called Harpoon. So in this case, I've harpooned two files already. We have the main file and we also have the readme, which just lets me in general switch between those files quite quickly. And that's kind of usually how I work. If I want to add something to that file, let's say the analysis option file, use space A and I have that as a third keybind. Now let's head over to the configuration for getting Dart set up with NeoVim. So in the dot files, we can head over to NeoVim config and the most important file in here is the LSP file. Again, if you want to see the full setup, you can check out Primogen's video. You can also just clone this repo probably and just symlink the file if you want to. I highly recommend you setting up your own keybinds to get it to kind of your own feeling. So what I'm using here is a plugin called LSP0. This is used to get the language server set up for all the different languages. I can run a command called Mason for all of my kind of languages that I've set up. So I have things like Bash, the Lua language, Prettier, Prisma, the Rust analyzer, TypeScript, and so on. One thing to notice here is that I don't have Dart configured here. That's because Dart is actually not part of the languages that we can select. When you actually clone Flutter, you get Dart as well. So we just have to manually set up Dart, which is kind of straightforward. So kind of be aware, you have to have the like Dart in general in, in your path. I'm pretty sure you're required to have that anyway, so I just assume everyone has that. To get it set up, you have to set up the LSP config. It's just very simple, local, create a variable, and then require LSP config. Then we can do and select the Dart language server. We can do setup, unattach, which is referencing our unattach here, which has all of our keybinds that we use for the language server. In this case, we have our go to definition, the hover documentation, diagnostic like errors, um, the diagnostic list that I showed you as well, and things like the code action or references or the name. All of the things you kind of expect from a language server. Another very important part here is that you should add settings for files or folders you want to exclude from the language server. So very typical in Flutter is that you might want to navigate to the source code of Flutter. In that case, I have Flutter in general cloned to my home directory, tools, and then Flutter, which makes it just that I want to exclude that from the actual analysis. I also want to exclude things like packages that I've done with pubget because I don't want them to be analyzed in this case. That doesn't mean that we can't check 
the code out and see the actual documentation and things like that. We just don't want to see errors that comes up because you haven't run pubg yet in those in the main SDK. Fidget just lets me have kind of like a progress indicator if the language server is loading in the bottom right corner. Now, if you want to check out the repository, it's just dot .files, I will link it down in the description. Here I have all of my configuration as well. I have Tmax, I have, if you're using Mac, Yabai and SKHD, I have NeoVim, it's kind of like, you can shake whatever you want to shake. But that's all the configuration I use for NeoVim for running with, with Flutter. I'm using this for very large projects in general, so I haven't seen any issues with it so far. It's in general quite hard to get into learning the flow of using something like NeoVim. But hey, if you liked the video, make sure to subscribe and probably check the video that's coming up somewhere here.